Shabuya, yeah, yeah, Shabuya, roll call. My name is Kevin. Yeah. That is my name. Yeah. They call me Kevin. Yeah. Because that's my name. Roll call. Shabuya. I'm feeling really torn about the new The Office reboot. On one hand, I'd love to see more of that humor, charm, and awkwardness in the mockumentary style. I really miss the show. It's wild to think how long ago it was on, back when people still use DVDs. I think I've got a couple of The Office DVDs we burned back then tucked away somewhere. Another part of me is worried. How can you not be overshadowed by Dunder Mifflin? Steve Carell was perfect as the bumbling Michael Scott, and the rest of the cast was just as great. John Krasinski as Jim, Jenna Fisher as Pam, and the real star Rain Wilson as Dwight Schrute, the assistant to the regional manager. So it's confirmed that we're getting a reboot, revival, or maybe a new anthology or spin-off in the Office universe from the show's creator Greg Daniels and writer Michael Coleman. The new show will be set in the same universe as the original, though we all know the actual original was British, but it won't be in Scranton, PA, and it won't be about a paper company. This time, the same documentary crew will be covering a dying historic Midwestern newspaper and the publisher trying to revive it with volunteer reporters. Honestly, that sounds like a pretty good idea, and a newsroom will be a nice change from a paper sales office, so that's the good news. The bad news is that it's going to be on Peacock. So far, only two cast members have been announced, though Peacock says the show will have an ensemble cast. First up is Domnal Gleeson, whom you might know from Ex Machina, Star Wars, Harry Potter, and other movies. He's a fantastic actor, but not someone I'd usually link to this type of comedy. Then again, he was in The Patient with Steve Carell, so there's that. Although his best performance to date is in About Time, he was perfect, but again, it was not a comedy role. The second cast member is Sabrina Impacciatore. She is an Italian actress best known internationally for her role as Valentina in season two of HBO's black comedy drama series, The White Lotus. Her performance earned her a Primetime Emmy Award nomination, who played the hapless hotel manager in season two of The White Lotus. We don't know anything about their characters yet, though. One of the best things about The Office was that most of the main cast wasn't famous when it first aired. Many of them became famous or went on to other big roles, but they were mostly new faces or not very recognizable at the time. I just realized the other day that Rain Wilson was in Sahara with Matthew McConaughey. I hope the new series brings in some newcomers too, instead of just established actors. It's been more than 10 years since the final episode of The Office aired on NBC, and the acclaimed comedy series continues to gain popularity and build new generations of fans on Peacock, said NBC Universal Entertainment president Lisa Katz. In partnership with Universal Television and led by the creative team of Greg Daniels and Michael Komen, this new series, set in the universe of Dunder Mifflin, introduces a new cast of characters in a fresh setting, ripe for comedic storytelling, a daily newspaper. Now let's talk about the title of the Office sequel. According to a Twitter handle discussing film, the Writers Guild of America's page for Greg Daniels has revealed the title. For those who don't know, Greg Daniels co-created the Office sequel with Michael Komen. The sequel, previously known as the Daniels and Komen Untitled Project, is now titled The Paper. Yes, the new title for the Office sequel is The Paper. Discussing film shared, the new The Office series is reportedly titled The Paper. The series follows the Dunder Mifflin documentary crew as they focus on a dying historic Midwestern newspaper and its volunteer reporters. But now let's face the dark truth. Peacock's The Office spin-off needs to avoid the mistake that ruined the original show for many. The Office remains one of the best sitcoms of all time. Now that over a decade has passed since it ended, Peacock's upcoming spin-off show has the perfect opportunity to learn from the biggest mistake made by its parent program. The cast of The Office underwent several changes throughout its nine-season run, with some stars remaining consistent. However, the show handled some changes better than others and had to readjust its formula along the way. Despite the original show's success, it fell short in one very important area. Now that the franchise is being revisited, the producers can learn from the office's missteps to ensure the spin-off avoids similar pitfalls. One major criticism shared by fans and critics is that the office ran for too long. Hopefully, 
Peacock has taken notes over the years since the show ended, allowing them to view the project more objectively. While the award-winning sitcom undeniably had its successes, its golden years faded toward the end, largely due to overstaying its welcome. The spin-off should be cautious not to repeat this mistake. While Peacock likely intends for the spin-off to span multiple seasons, it's crucial to make renewal decisions on a year-by-year -year basis. If the spin-off doesn't resonate well with audiences or overstays its welcome, there's a risk of tarnishing the legacy of its parent show. Even now, The Office remains one of the most rewatchable series ever, but fans might hesitate to engage passionately if they feel the new project doesn't meet the high standards set by the original. Therefore, despite Peacock's likely long-term plans, each renewal decision should be carefully considered. If I have pinpoint the movement of its downfall, I would it was Steve Carell's departure marked the beginning of the show's decline. In Season 7, Episode 22 of The Office titled Goodbye Michael, Steve Carell's departure as a main cast member was a pivotal moment. While this emotional farewell could have served as a natural conclusion for many sitcoms, The Office opted to continue without its biggest star. This decision was hinted at in the remaining episodes of Season 7, as the story moved forward without Michael Scott leading the Scranton branch of Dunder Mifflin. Steve Carell did return to The Office for a guest appearance as Michael Scott before the show concluded. Despite efforts to fill the void left by Steve Carell's departure, his absence noticeably affected the show's quality. Ed Helms' portrayal of Andy Bernard never quite convincingly replaced Michael as the regional manager. While newcomers like James Spader and Catherine Tate tried to fill the social catalyst role that Michael Scott had, none quite lived up to his legacy. Now, there's no guarantee that The Office's spin-off will have control over its fate. Interestingly, despite The Office's enduring popularity, the announcement of the upcoming spin-off has been met with mostly negative reception. As a result, the show will likely face intense scrutiny for any missteps. If it doesn't resonate with audiences, Peacock might decide to cancel the project earlier than anticipated. Therefore, the spin-off could face the opposite challenge compared to the original show. It might struggle to gain traction rather than continuing past its prime. Despite its uneven final seasons, The Office ultimately wrapped up in a satisfying way. If the spin-off struggles early on and gets cancelled abruptly, it could reinforce negative perceptions about the idea. However, the upcoming series can take steps to avoid this scenario and ensure a sense of closure if needed. Producing each season as a self-contained story without cliffhangers is indeed one of the easiest ways to provide closure if the spin-off gets cancelled. This approach prevents viewers from being left hanging and frustrated. However, having unanswered questions could potentially help the spin-off run longer than anticipated, as viewers might stay engaged for resolution. Currently, The Office Seasons 1-9 are available for streaming on Peacock, but there's no official release date yet for the spin-off show. Well, that's it for today. Do you think the paper, the title of The Office sequel, captures the essence of what made the original show great? What are your thoughts on spin-offs in general? Are they a refreshing extension of beloved stories, or do they risk diluting the magic of the original? Share your opinions in the comments below. Remember to like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell to stay updated on all things entertainment. Until next time, take care and keep enjoying your favorite shows.